Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. The next phenomenon we're going to look at that doesn't fit within standard uh, X-bar theoretic or movement-based approaches is incorporation. This phenomenon is closely related to polysynthesis, which um, we talked about in the previous video, um, but it actually happens in languages uh, that aren't polysynthetic. It also happens in languages like English, even, in cases like I took a course in basket weaving, or um, He's an expert at door opening. Those adjectives are an example of incorporation. So um, polysynthesis is the marking on a verb that reflects inflectional information, information like person, number, and case. Uh, incorporation is different from polysynthesis in that what it does is takes the lexical content of the object and it includes that with the verb head in some kind of complex morphology. So let's take a look at Mohawk. Here's an example um, from uh, Mark Baker's book, Incorporation. And in Mohawk, what you find is you can say uh, a sentence like this one, I bought uh, or the bed. Um, the verb is uh, well inflected for um, uh, person and number of the subject and all sorts of tense etc information but the object is existing off here in its own noun phrase but there's an alternative form um, where you take the root of the um, object and you nest it right inside the verb so you can see that this form uh, that means bed is in between the inflectional information and the verbal root um, uh, right there in the middle of that word. Uh, this is the phenomenon known as incorporation because what you're doing is you're incorporating the object into the root. One common hypothesis about how this happens is it's really a kind of head-to-head -head movement. So just like we have V's moving into T's and voice phrases uh, in languages like English, what we have is the option in Mohawk to take the noun head of the object and do head-to-head -head movement into the verbal head. And this constructs this complicated um, word right here. Now let's consider the predictions of this head-to-head -head movement account of incorporation. One prediction is that things that are not the head inside the DP will be stranded outside the verb. And this indeed seems to be the case. So um, this is an example from Greenlandic Eskimo, where the um, things like the uh, modifiers, like this adjective here, um, are outside of the structure, uh, which is the verb plus the object. So the verb plus the object um, are one word, and all the modifiers for that object are outside that. And that's what's predicted if you've done N to D raising, that everything else in the DP is going to be left behind. The second prediction is that only objects are ever going to incorporate, and I'll explain why that is in just a second. But that indeed seems to be the case. So look at two possible interpretations for um, Mapadungun um, incorporation. Here we have uh, the word cow has been incorporated into the, into the verb. Um, it's right there in the middle of all the verbal morphology. And this particular sentence can only mean my father is looking for the cows. So only um, the cow, the object, can be inside the verb. There's no interpretation of this sentence where the cows are looking for my father. So there's no way in which cow can be interpreted as the subject only as the object. And this seems to be true um, for the vast majority of languages that only objects ever incorporate. The reason for this is um, a principle or constraint that we've not discussed before called the empty category principle, which holds that traces 
in particular as empty categories always have to be C commanded by their antecedents. And if you think about all the movement we've done uh, throughout the rest of the semester, the vast majority has gone up the tree. The one exception has been affix lowering, and we actually argued that we can replace affix lowering using selectional accounts. So almost all movement, or all movement, goes up the tree. And that's explained by this principle that says empty categories, traces must be C commanded by their antecedent, which is a little bit like one of the binding constraints, right? It, it says that um, binding constraints is an anaphor must find its antecedent that C commands it. Um, the uh, empty category principle, or ECP, says that traces have to be C commanded by their antecedent, the thing, the element that's moved. Now, this is, uh, this follows, um, if you believe this particular constraint, then the fact that only objects can incorporate um, is explained. Because if you were to try and incorporate subjects, you would have to do downwards movement into the verb. So only cases where you are incorporating the object are you doing movement up the tree. So that follows uh, from this empty category principle.